Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, President Muhammad Buhari reaffirms his commitment to ending insecurity in the country, insists he will not disappoint Nigerians in delivering on his three key promises to the citizens. Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoenka calls for caution on the Aruga settlement program, says that issue is explosive and must be handled with care. National Assembly resumes legislative activities as President of the Senate announces principal officers in the upper legislative chambers. And China wades into yesterday's violence in Hong Kong, accuses protesters of illegal actions that trample on the rule of law. On business news tonight, UK High Commissioner to Nigeria, Katrina Lang, and NNPC Group Managing Director, Mikanti Baru, raise crucial issues in Nigeria's oil and gas sector. On sports news tonight, Super Eagles of Nigeria set up a clash with title holders Cameroon in the round of 16 of the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations on Saturday, July the 6th in Alexandria. And from Abuja, INEC expresses concerns over electoral violence ahead of the Kogi and Bayelsa State's governorship election, restates call for electoral offences tribunal. The security situation in some parts of the country is becoming more worrisome to the president and he's reaffirming his commitment to bring an end to the trend. President Muhammad Buhari gave assurance today when he received members of the Buhari support group who paid him a visit at the State House. President Buhari also affirms his commitment to deliver on his promises to Nigerians at all levels. Our correspondent Gloria Mezweke reports. President Muhammad Buhari face to face with members of the Buhari Media Organization. It's a group of media volunteers formed in 2013 with a mandate to promote and defend the Buhari candidacy and administration. Among them is Mr. Tunde Thompson, a journalist jailed in 1984 under the notorious Decree 4 of 1983. It's a great privilege to be here. The chairman of the group spoke on their commitment to the president. There is progress on many fronts and several arrests are being made. The same goes to the fight against corruption. Your talk is being matched with actions. It is almost exactly when you are... President Mohamed Buhari describes the Buhari media organization as a strategic information management asset whose efforts cannot be repaid. He assures of his resolve to keep his promises. The task ahead for the next four years will require a formidable team. We are doing unpopular things in face of powerful individuals and taking on vested interests who are accustomed to the corrupt old manner. But we must do things the right way. If we promise change, then we must deliver it. I'm determined to end the security challenges we face as a country. President Buhari had earlier hosted the Buhari Support Group Center, which submitted a proposal to him seeking to transform into a research center called Buharism Center. It's a political ideology and philosophy, which is his, which all of us are ready to try and get a center in which we can be able to develop and harness and distribute and get Nigerians and even non-Nigerians to accept the political ideology that engulfs everybody. They say the center will be self-sustaining and will teach the Buhari political ideology beyond his second tenure in office. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. As protests continue in some states over the implementation of the rural grazing area, Ruga, Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoenka has described the initiative as an explosive issue that needs to be handled carefully. Professor Shoenka explains that ranching has been the solution to cattle rearing in different countries of the world. He adds that the implementation of the ranching or any other initiative to solve the farmers' herders' crisis should, uh, should be the ultimate and the humanity in it should be priority. Ruga is going to be an explosive issue. 
and it had better be handled very carefully. Um, why is it that we fail to take our models from successful um, performers, uh, ways in which people deal and have dealt for decades, for centuries, with cattle everywhere. I travel everywhere. There's nothing so strange, nothing mysterious about cattle rearing. Why should cattle become a problem just because we like to eat beef? I don't understand it. This, there are solutions which are very simple. People have talked about ranching, but the ranching has got to be done in places which are environmentally uh, congenial to that particular uh, kind of trade, and at the same time do not afflict humanity. People have been killed in hundreds till today, and it's only because of the failure of leadership at the critical time. That's the most important. And the cattle rearers have been given a sense of impunity. Uh, they kill without any compunction. The dry farmers also are contributing to the food solution of the country. They drive them away, burn their crops, eat their crops. And then you come with Ruga. I think there's going to be trouble in this country. If this cattle uh, rearing issue is not handled imaginatively, and with humanity as the priority. There cannot be any kind of society where cattle take priority over human beings. It is as elementary as that. Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka. In the meantime, the Benue state government has been reacting to comments by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Garbi Shehu, on the Ruga settlement in some states. Mr. Shehu had stated on the news at 10 just yesterday that Benue state was not included in the federal government's Ruga plan, insisting that the initiative is voluntary. But the Benue state government has described Mr. Shehu's comments as contradictory, false and misleading. A statement by the Chief Press Secretary to the Benue State Governor, Mr. Teba Akasi, says that the federal government, through its Minister of Agriculture, wrote to the Benue State Government, informing it about the decision to establish Ruga settlements in the three senatorial zones of the state. The statement adds that the Benue State Ministry of Agriculture, which received the correspondence, replied to the federal ministry, stating clearly that Benue State has no land for the Ruga settlements, but has land for ranches, as stipulated by the state's open grazing prohibition and ranches establishment law of 2017. It further explains that the Benue state government made public its rejection of the Ruga model of animal husbandry and reminded those pushing for what it calls the illegal settlement patterns above provisions of the country's constitution and the Land Use Act. To all the stories now, principal officers have been named in the Senate. In two separate letters sent to the upper legislative house by the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, Senator Abdullahi Yahya was named as majority leader, Senator Borovates Ajayi, deputy majority leader, Senator Oju Zakalu, chief whip, Senator Abdullahi Zabi, deputy chief whip, Senator Einaya Abarabe, minority leader, Senator Emmanuel Bwacha, Deputy Minority Leader. Senator Philip Aduda, Minority Whip. And he will be assisted by Senator Shabi Yao. Our correspondent Terry Kumi now reports. Having sorted out sitting arrangements in the Red Chamber, for which plenary was adjourned for two weeks, Senators arrive and move to their allotted seats. Now invite the mentioned... After the votes and proceedings are adopted, the clerk of the Senate swears in Mohamed Sani from the APC as Senator representing Niger East. He replaces David Umaru, who was removed by a Supreme Court judgment. After wide consultations with the Senate then, workers, the list of principal officers of the Ninth Senate is read by the President of the Senate, as sent in by the chairman of the two major political parties, the APC and the PDP. Senate leader, Abdullahi Obakar Yahya, Deputy Senate leader, Borafes Robert Ajayi, Chief Whip, Dr. Oju Uzo Kalu, and Deputy Chief Whip, 
Abdullahi Ali Usabi, Senate Minority Leader, Senator Abarebe, Deputy Senate Minority Leader, Senator Emmanuel Boacha, Senate Minority Whip, Senator Philip Aduda, and Deputy Senate Minority Whip, Senator Sahabiau. That has been done. The acceptance speeches of the two leaders dwell on unity of purpose in the Senate chamber. I pledge to you that I will be a unifier, not a divider. And I will try as much as is humanly possible to engage with all my colleagues, irrespective of what side of the aisle they find themselves. From this side of the aisle, we will give you our cooperation. And we expect the same cooperation to come from our colleagues on the other side of the aisle. The president of the Senate also has a speech of his own. I intend to work closely with the President Buhari in the interest of Nigeria without compromising the integrity of the National Assembly as an independent arm of government with oversight powers as spelled out in the Constitution. The Senate also set up an ad hoc committee that will come up with its legislative agenda, and that report is expected to be presented in two weeks. Now, there were two matters of urgent public importance that were raised on the floor of the Senate, but as is customary with the Senate, if a matter is raised as a matter of urgent public importance on the first day, it will be debated on the next day. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. From the Senate, we'll move to the House of Representatives, where lawmakers today concluded plenary without announcing names of its principal officers for the majority and minority positions. Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila gave no explanation for the inability of the House to come up with the principal officers. A member of the House Ad Hoc Committee on Information, Salam Bamidele, however, says that consultations are still ongoing and the names will be announced before the end of the week. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, has a report on this and other issues that happened in plenary today. It's resumption day for lawmakers as they return from a two weeks recess. They spend the first few minutes trying to identify their seats. The speaker arrives to signal the commencement of the day's plenary session. He informs lawmakers of steps to ensure e-voting can commence in the House. We will now be having e-voting in these chambers. Now, this will not be uh, applicable to all motions and bills because we have several of them. But those that we consider important, of significance, we will be adopting the e-voting system. Everyone had expected the names of principal officers for the majority and minority leadership positions to be announced, but the speaker made no announcements. Instead, a motion of urgent public importance led to a lengthy debate. The motion looks at the need to forestall air crashes and near mishaps in the Nigerian aviation industry due to poor weather conditions. Worry that poor weather condition has been the reason for most of the, these crashes, even the mishap at recent times. Members speak in support of the bill. All the airports we have in Nigeria, 20% of them does not have enough instrument landing system. And the point is, we are appropriate for these facilities, they don't implement it. Most of our air traffic controls in our airports are not to international standards. I believe the Ministry of Aviation should concentrate more on that. The motion scales through. Those in favor of this motion, please say aye. Those against, say nay. The ayes have it. The session comes to an end with no announcement regarding the party leadership positions. According to some sources, it will appear multiple lists had been submitted to the speaker to be announced. A member of the Ad Hoc Committee on Information gives an indication of the steps being taken to resolve the deadlock. It is possible you receive correspondence from one or two or three sources. You still need to reconcile, you still need to harmonize, you still need to make sure that what you are going to take as a decision actually reflects what the rule book says about filling those positions. So Mr. Speaker has been guided by the rules of the House. This is a situation that is unique and it will appear the ninth House of Representatives is taking steps to ensure this does not escalate.
Nigerians will now have to wait to see those that will emerge to fill those positions in the days to come. Lanre Lassesi, Channels Television News. In part two, after the break, we'll examine the preparedness of the Ninth National Assembly to address some critical national issues as they begin full legislative duties. And we have a two-time House of Representative member, Baba Jimmy Benson, to discuss this. Stay with us.